to charge the atmosphere today with your praise. Somebody shout unto God with the voice of triumph. God, we bless you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you up, oh God. There's nobody like you, Jesus. God, you are King of kings. You are Lord, Lord. We magnify you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many know that no weapon formed against us should not prosper? How many know that no weapon formed against us shall not prosper? Every tongue that rises against us shall be condemned. Give me that Jesus, oh God. God told me to tell someone this morning that when any weapon comes, your weapon is the worship. Worship on this morning and every weapon, every tongue will be condemned and will fall down. Father God, we pray right now, oh God. God, we pray for the service on today, oh God. Father, I pray right now, oh God, that your presence, your power, and your anointing begin to flow right now, oh God. I pray right now, oh God, that someone that don't know you on today, oh God, that your word, oh God, your word will cause them to change the course of their life, oh God. Father, I pray right now, oh God, for our pastor, oh God. I pray, oh God, that the word that will come forth on today, oh God, it will speak to the heart of man, oh God. It will move us to a place, oh God, a place in you that we have not experienced, oh God. Father, I pray right now, oh God, for each and every last one of us, oh God, to have an encounter with you, oh God, like never before, oh God. Father, I pray right now, oh God, that you will touch us on this morning, oh God. Father, I pray right now, oh God, that your presence, your anointing, your power, oh God, will begin to flow, oh God, in a way that has never been flowed, oh God. God has experienced you in a way we've never experienced you on this morning, oh God. We thank you right now, God. We praise you right now, God, for the move, oh God, for a move that is coming right now, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus, oh God. Let us move out our own way, oh God. Let us move out our own way, oh God, so that we can experience you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.
It's due to his name. See, 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 see if, if y'all, if you all watch the stream on Wednesday night, I was teaching on the value of the name. Because when we learn the value in the name, how many of you all, how many of y'all, I mean, you got some real jewelry. Come on, some real jewelry. How many of y'all costume? I mean, some real jewelry. Come on. How many that, how many that, uh, 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 that Kmart? I mean, some real stuff. Come on. It may be, it may be small, but it's real. Come on, maybe it's a quarter carrot, but it's real. Come on. See, when you have some, when you have some real jewelry, you don't lay your real stuff everywhere. You only bring your real stuff out when you're getting ready to do something. See, some of us have a real praise. And then we have a superficial praise. We usually bring out our praise after God has brought us through something. But I'm wondering how many folks can break out your praise. Before God does anything else, you can declare that God, I thank you for what you've already done. Come on, somebody, I thank you for how you already blessed me. I thank you for every door you already opened. The Bible said to let everything that had breath praise, 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 praise. I wish somebody that you're going to pray because you're good. I wish somebody that you're going to pray because you're goodness. I wish somebody that you're going to praise him because you know he kept you. He kept your children. He kept your family. He kept, I wish somebody in the house was faithful and thankful.
same level as God to lift you. Because if you will praise him to the same degree of what he brought you out of, you will lose it right here.
But the cruise can start off nice and on quiet seas. All right. But they don't put the boat in park. <laughs> because a storm show up. They either find a way to go around the storm, but they don't ever stop in the storm. Would you tell somebody and say, don't stop in the storm, don't stop in the storm. 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 Because what got you here, see, oh, thank you, Lord, oh, God. See, sometimes God uses the wind in your life to blow you to the place he really wants you to go. And what many of us are doing is we're resisting the wind. And God said, no, the wind is really your friend. Because it is designed to blow you to the place I've ordained for your life. Because the problem is, sometimes in a storm, it don't look like there's destiny in the storm. But some in the class say there's destiny in the storm. And so, I will praise you all is the one thing we can give to God. Hear me. I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. The, the praise is the one thing we give to God that God does not give to himself. We cannot be consumers of just the word only. Because that means we only came and got what God had for us. But the question is always, what did we give back to God? Ask the person I said, what did you give back to God? Because here's what I, I, I know. Brother Corey, I can tell when folks praise God during the week. Because when I praise God during the week, it's not hard to get in, to get in praise and worship on Sunday morning. But if I'm so focused on the week, on what I'm going through. When you come to church, you want somebody to push you through what you come through. But watch this, you can't birth a baby without labor pains. And sometimes you gotta praise God in spite. Let me stop that. I'm gonna do that right now. You gotta do what you got to do. No matter what you've been through or how you feel, you gotta do what you gotta do. Do me a favor, make the person by your way. Tell me, say, neighbor, for the next 20 seconds. I'm getting ready to holler. And I'm gonna scream. And I'm gonna wave both hands. Because right now, I'm thinking about what God does for me. Right now, I'm thinking about God's goodness.
Won't you point and to as many folks as you can? Tips and I'm grateful. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. Come on. Chickens. He said, What's wrong with y'all? 
Understand, they had seen his miracles. They seen what Jesus could do. Yet when they got in trouble, they were full of fear. Watch this. Jesus says, how is it that ye have no faith? Today I want to use for a subject, I have a game plan. To the person who said, I have a game plan. Spirit of the living God, this morning I pray that you would speak to us clearly and concisely, Father. I pray that you would line up my thoughts with your thoughts. Let me say nothing that does not come out of the heart in the mouth of God. God, speak to us all this morning, individually and collectively. God, in this house today, do what you want to do. We thank you, we bless you, and give your name glory. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. You may have your seat. I have a game plan. This, you all, is important because when you understand <laughs> the importance of having a plan, even in your life, if something you, you, you should plan for the future. I was sharing with Lady Sargent on this morning or yesterday, I was sharing with her. I said, it is time for us to start planning to leave a legacy for our children's children. Because our children, their job is to make sure they leave a legacy for their children's children. And you all been, been around pastors long to understand that one of the things I say for us as a people that it is time for us to stop letting the gener next generation start out with zero. Our ancestors started out with nothing. Their children started out with nothing. Your parents didn't give you nothing. And that repetitive cycle, now you are at an age where if you die now, your kids don't have nothing. The problem is not that you didn't have anything to leave. The problem is that we fail to have a game plan. Right. This morning I want to do a spin-off, if you will, from the lessons that we dealt with on last week. I pray y'all were blessed last week as we dealt with pray my strength in the Lord. And I want to try to encourage you and kind of draw our lesson together because most of us are wearing some type of jersey from some team. Uh, all of those white socks, they, ain't, they don't count yet. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's my personal preference. Pray for me. I, I need Jesus. <laughs> and so they're, they're so they're white socks. But anyway, I want to try to uh, tie this text together to help us understand that you and I need to come up with a strategy, if you will. A game plan so that when the enemy comes and attack your life, you already know what to do when he shows up. All right. All right. The Bible says the enemy is going to and fro seeking whom he may devour. Which means he's going throughout the earth looking for someone's life. He can mess up. And if I would ask many of you, you would raise your hand and say, Pastor, he's been, he already came to my house a time or two. Come on. So the question then is not, is he coming? The question remains, was there a plan of action that you could take when he shows up? Right. Now, I'm not saying Satan himself is coming because he's assigning demons to every one of us. And all of us will have our opportunity to fight an enemy sent by the devil. That's the way you're saying. The enemy, because he understands, the Bible said his time is but for a little while. And his job is to bring as much devastation and discouragement in the lives of the children of God. He knows he can't keep them from heaven. But if I can keep them discouraged 
and keep them from being effective while they're here. Then even though they're on their way to heaven, they won't do damage to the kingdom of darkness while they're here. And you'll be surprised at the number of God's children while they're saved and spend time speaking in tongue and many of them are going through the Bible with us. Listen, they are still no threat to the devil. That's why, because they have not come up with a game plan to fight the devil. But tell the person, by say, it's time to get to the fight. Now, I'm going to use the word fight and game here uh, interchangeably because while we know it's not a game spiritually, if you and I bow out of the game or we bow out of the race, even though we're saved, we miss the opportunity to pay the devil back for all of the stuff he brought in your life. And I'm going to enter anybody besides me who can think of at least four or five things the devil did in your life. And you said, devil, whenever I get a chance to pay you back, oh, you think Jack Brown said the big payback. Oh, I got something up my sleeve to get the devil back. And so here we go. It means that every believer thing you are needs a game plan. Because you cannot wait until your life turns upside down. To the side you're going to pray. You can't wait until your life turns upside down to the side I'm going to get into the word of God. You can't wait until your life turns upside down and you're not in poverty to the side where I guess I'll tie it now. Because we want to make God our, 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 our good humor man and every time we get in trouble to bail us out when we didn't follow the game plan all along the way. The writer of Psalm 34, 19 declared that he says, Many are the afflictions hey, of the righteous. Hey, good God. He said, I don't care how saved you are, yeah. how much you speak in tongue, yeah. you can prophesy until your hair fall out. Yeah. When it's all said and done, you still don't go through some stuff. Yeah. Somebody's just saying, Pastor, I know that's right. I know that's right God. He said, You are still going to be attacked by the enemy, but what he says, he said, But the Lord oh. delivered him out of them all. Oh. In other words, he says, God got a game plan. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Anybody think God got a game plan? Yeah. See, God had already planned to bring you out before you got in. Pastor, yeah. can you prove it? That's why he said, with his stripes, you are healed. You're saying, Pastor, but I ain't sick yet. Because the game plan is, whenever he attacks you, you better know you're already healed. Yeah. And because I know I'm already healed, when the enemy comes to attack me, I can pull out my playbook and say, Devil, hold up, wait a minute. Yeah. You ain't seen page two, paragraph number three. He says, with his stripes, yeah. I'm already healed. Somebody can say, I'm already healed. already healed. Look at it, you are in the TLB version. It says, the good man does not escape all troubles. You can't be that good to escape trouble. You can't pray hard enough to escape trouble. He said, but he has them too. But the Lord helps him in each and every one. Let me give you the LDS version. Every time I get in trouble, God is always right there to help me get out. See, the Bible says, he's a present help in trouble. Y'all missed that. He's a present help in trouble. So every time I find myself in trouble, don't look for the devil. We know he's there, but look for God. Because we spend so much time trying to see where the devil is. Listen, if you saw him, you wouldn't know him. The Bible says he's a wolf in sheep clothing. He comes in as an angel of light. So even if you saw him, you wouldn't know him. See, what's the you know, devil is saying? He is not going to show up in a red suit. Pitchfork. Come on, big old pointy ears. And a long tail. Because then you would know who he is. The devil going to come at you smiling. Winking. Smelling good. But he got a whole bag of tricks. And those tricks are designed to bring havoc in your world. See, because the devil you are, is always strategizing. He's always trying, trying to find a way, watch this, to find out where your weak point is. 
Many of us, you all, we spend time strengthening our strength, but never spend as much time strengthening our weaknesses. Notice this. The enemy, when he attacks you or attacks us, he always attacks us, watch this now, right here, in the same area. Look at your life and find out the area the enemy attacks you in and look at the last place he hits you and then go back track. He got me here last week. Wait a minute. The same place last month. Hold up. Wait a minute. The same place in January. And if you will look at the enemy's track record, you will see that he's going for your weak areas. Because the devil knows he can't hit you when you're strong. But he finds the weak areas of our lives and hit us in those areas. Why? Because he knows that if I keep hitting him in those weak areas, that's the place he's most effective. All right. Great preacher. See, watch this. Over in 1 Peter 5, 8, in the ERV trend, he says, Control yourself and be careful. The devil is your enemy. And he goes around like a roaring lion, seeking for someone to attack and eat. In other words, the devil is trying, watch this, to not just hurt you, he's trying to consume you. You say, Pastor, now the devil can't physically eat me. Listen, if he's got your mind, he's got you. Come on, if he got your emotions, he has you. If he has your thought life, then he has you. And many of us are not aware of his devices. But he's always hitting the straw at the same place. At the same place. The same weak spot in our lives. See, see, there was a time a season in my life, you all, that when when I got mad at Lady Carol, I knew someone was gonna come and try to hit on the boy. <laughs> well, I didn't go to leave for y'all. I'm going to say, she know what? I said, as when she would get mad at me, the devil would hit me and bring somebody to hit at your boy. Because the devil knew that if I was mad at her and she wasn't cooperating, he was going to send somebody who would cooperate. Come on, Pastor. And it, we shall be real in church. And it would be up to me to stand strong under that pressure. And how many of you know that when you're lonely going through a rough place, it's hard to say, can I get some real folks in the house this morning? Because if God will pull the cover off of some of y'all up in here, you still ain't saying no, and you ain't got nobody. But every time you feel it with the devil, all of a sudden, he come Pookie. He called you, hey, baby, what's up, baby? He didn't call you in, in two, four months. All of a sudden, you're going to fit you all your feelings. I can't believe y'all ain't seen me nobody yet. I should have kept the last one I had. All by myself. And all of me. All by myself. And then he called. Hey, baby, what you doing? You been on my mind all night. Now you know that. The problem is, you lonely and he lonely. Right, right, right. Let me get out of that. And the devil knows that if I am going to steal victory in your life, I can't come at you in your strong area. I got to hit you in your weak area. See, we don't see in the old school church, they told us don't do it. They didn't tell us why. They said don't do it. Here is the reality what makes us fall out of a place with God is our emotions. And when we think we are missing out on something, the devil said, oh, see, see the devil kept a good record of what you like. Oh, you ain't talking back to me. He knows how you like it. He knows how you like it. He knows how you like it. 
And as soon as y'all thought out, yeah. have you noticed though, he generally sent you one who looked just like the last one you broke away. Come on, come on, Pastor. Let me keep, let me keep, let me keep moving. See, see, I recall a season, you all, a season when the Bears, the Bears had a, 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 a jacked up O-line. That's an offensive line. They had a jacked up offensive line. That's when Cutler was playing. You want to cut? Oh, Lord, see, you want to cut? I ain't never like Cutler. Anyway, I pray for him. No, bless you. Come on, be your mind just so you can have a church. But they had a, their right side of the offense was awful. And every time a good defense would play against them, they would stack to one side where all the weak players were. Because they knew if I kept pounding at the weak area of the O-line, I could take the quarterback out and the quarterback could not be effective. And even though Cutler had a good arm, he could throw. But if somebody's in my face, I can't do my job. The devil knows if I can stay in your face and keep hitting you in your weak areas of your life, but I don't care how saved you are, how would you pick a tongue? If I can stay in your face and keep hitting you at the weak area of your life, you will never ever be effective. Yes. Amen. See, there ought to be a no already in your game plan. Always. Always. Ooh, got quiet down, Lord. Uh -huh. Only the folks over 70 said amen that one, Lord. Uh -huh. But I'm going to say it again. There should be a no already in your game plan. Because if you keep falling every time the devil brings the same thing to you, you're going to always come on, Lord, I'm sorry, I did it again. But well, that, that's time 2,335. <laughs> come on, beside me. How many of y'all missed God more than once? Come on. Okay, I'm going to jump. How many of y'all missed it more than 10 times? How many of y'all lost count? <laughs> I can't get a talk back church today. But the one thing you do know that if I keep falling for the same thing in my life, then it's up to me to identify the weak area in my life. Yeah, but you may, you may have got me the last time, but that was the last time you got me. My hope is built in the word of God, and if God can strengthen me in the area, I am going to look to him to deliver me in the area of my weakness. The devil loves to cause your disruption in my life. To keep us from advancing in the thing that God has called us to do. And I believe by the spirit of God that all of you all want to please God with your life. All right. But what did you do when there's no game plan? Right. When the enemy comes and challenges your money. See, I've seen folk who have not tied all year. And as soon as they're about to get put out, now they want to tie. And then tie two dollars. <laughs> and they make a thousand dollars a week. Wow. But give God two dollars and say, God, here's my time. Yeah. Now you know and I know the principle of tithing is 10%, right. not 1%. All right. All right. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. But if God were to give you what you put in at a time, you blame God. Right. And God said, I'll give you what you asked for. Right. You said, That's all I got. That's all I'm going to give you. Since I'm here, since I'm here, do y'all see the power of God? God is the one who gave you the job. God is the one who gave you the money. See, your, your gift, your offering, your job is for your seed. Your job is not your source. Your job is your seed. And when God allowed me to get a job, it's to sow a seed in the kingdom so I can live by the kingdom system. Somebody say, I live, I live by the kingdom system. The kingdom. Come on, can I say, I live, I live by the kingdom system. I the kingdom. See, I don't have to make a whole lot of money to live good. Amen. Because when I live by the system of the kingdom of God, he always opens doors. He always makes ways. He always calls somebody to give into my mother. He's always making a way out of no way. He's always providing. He's always keeping. He's always covering. He's always there to make sure that every one of my needs. Thank you, Lord. How many folks in the country, he keeps on make, making a way? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So what the enemy is doing, doing, doing you 
Roll is telling us, shut, shut down. Watch this. He is shooting the gaps in our lives. Trying to cut you down. He is shooting the gaps in my life to cause us to lose. But I decided a long time ago that I hate to lose. I hate to lose. I don't know if y'all ever heard my story. See, see, right now I'm six two and a half, and I'm two hundred and fifty pounds. <laughs> I need a diet. I'm telling you. I need a Jenny Craig plan. Hope she's seen and pay me for that, that plug. Right. Yeah, but watch this. In high school, I was five feet one in my singing year. But every day, almost my teacher would call my mother and say, Miss Sy, some moment left. He fight these big boys. They gonna hurt him. But I, I wasn't bad, I was good. But I ain't mind fighting. I'm just saying what I'm saying. I had a case of I had, a, I had a case of SNS, short Negro syndrome. Charlotte had a mind fight because the big guy who played football was, was coming from my head. I'd be in a the hallway. They find something and go, hey, sorry, but what? Here's my point. At some point, I decided I ain't losing this fight no more. I came to school that day and said, the first one hit me, I'm going to knock another flight of steps. Come on. I did. I didn't care. Went to the washroom, got about six foot, hit me in the back of my head, slapped the bejesus out of me. And before I knew it, I turned and I lit him up. Knocked him on his Debbie Airy. We didn't fight no more that year. Here's my point. When the devil knows where you're weak at, he'll fight you in the same spot over and over and over again. My baby, come on, point to you and stand flat-footed and say, devil, you got me the last time, but you ain't getting me no more. I messed up. I failed, God, the last time, but I'm not failing God no more. If I fail, you may get me in this area, but you won't get me here no more. No more. For all you all who have running faucets in your bathroom, mm -hmm. go home and look where the water runs in your bathroom. You'll see a, a, a indent in your, your porcelain uh, tub. Amen. Water is soft, but it hit the same spot over and over, every day, day in, day out. It'll wear a hole in something that is that, designed to hold it. The devil knows if I stay in the same spot over. Because even though you may get through it today, he's coming back. The Bible said the devil left just for a season. Which means he kept coming back. And because you didn't do it today, don't mean he ain't coming back tomorrow. So when you have a game plan, Devil, I'm not going to fall for that okie doke no more. Paul asked the question over in Galatians 5. Paul said, you did not well. But who hindered you? Here it is, that you should not obey the word of God. What's keeping you from obeying the truth? Can I tell you what it is? This stuff right here. We call flesh. Oh, yeah. Here is what the devil does. Well, the current the devil works with our desire. Mm -hmm. He will create a desire that he knows you desire. Mm -hmm. Find the right time to intensify that desire. Mm -hmm. And when that, that desire is intensified, 
you find yourself like a lion on the prowl, trying to satisfy the hunger of that desire. And the devil always has a yes person waiting to fulfill that desire. I'll prove it to you. Any of y'all ever seen a real pretty girl? She fine, she want to be, but she was with some real ugly joker. Yes. I know I had to own my soul. Yes. You're like, girl, you fine with that. That boy here, booger. Yes. He a booger personified. How in the world? But you notice, though, when you know me, you don't care what you get. Oh, I know I'm in the house. I figure how I get over him this. But you saying something. It ain't even, even, even in my nose, George. Come on. The devil don't see the, the, the devil. Oh God. The devil does not care. All he wants us to do is to get out the game. And it's hard to praise. And I know I ain't been in the game book all week. It's hard to praise. I'm not stuck the game plan. It's hard to get in the game, but I know I've not read the game plans all week. All right. Ask the person who might say, have you been in the game plan all week? Have you been in the game plan all week? So the, so the question is, what happens while you're injured? Because if you're in any game, there's a possibility of being injured. I don't care whether basketball, football, soccer, hockey, there's always a chance of being injured in the game. But watch this. What we need to do is to get in God's word and find out how to get healed and restored and get back in the game. If you read Matthew chapter 5, there is this uh, lesson Jesus taught me called the Beatitudes. But listen to the word, Pastor Mars. The Beatitudes should be commonly called the attitude that you should be in. Okay, I like that. The B attitude right now. Let this be your attitude right now. And just go this whole thing about bless thou, thou bless and bless and bless and 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 Matthew five ten he says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hey, 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 hey. Verse 11 he says, Blessed are they when men shall revile you and, and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Watch this. Verse 12 he says, Rejoice. Now wait a minute. You know, that, that makes no sense. With all this stuff coming against me, all of this outside attack, Jesus says, in the game book, rejoice. You missed it. In the game book, Jesus says, the game plan is to rejoice when you're under attack. When folk talking about you, lying on you, putting your name in the dirt, he says, that's the time to rejoice. Pastor White, he says, and be exceedingly glad. Yes, yes. For great is your reward. Watch this, here it is, in heaven. Now, what is God saying? He's saying that when you learn how to rejoice in spite of other folks' opinion, in spite of the stuff you're going through, when you learn how to rejoice, this is why I had you all pray this morning because many of you all came in here with all week on your head. And if I learn how to rejoice in the middle of what I'm going through, then the devil, watch this, the devil does not have a chance to have the advantage of my life. It's hard to worry while I'm worshiping. Are you hearing me? You can't worry and worship at the same time. Because worship is telling God how good he is. Worship ain't asking God for nothing. It's telling God, God, you are good. God, you are mighty. God, you are awesome. God, you are bad, man, my jammer. God, you are everything in the chips and the yard. God, you are my strong tower. God, you are my the wheel in the middle of the wheel. When we worship God, we're telling God how good he is. It's 
hard to worship and worry at the same time. Because if my mind is staying on him, then it's impossible to be worried when the person I'm worshiping is over my words. Oh, let me see. Like I said, like this. See, if you're worried about money, the God who owns it all, if I'm worshiping him, I'm telling him, God, I thank you that you own the cattle on a thousand hills and everything on the hill belongs to you. And because I'm your child, you got something on the hill that's designed to bring a blessing in my life. Why? Because I worship the one who owns it all. Something said he owns it all. And if and since he owns it all, and he does, when I worship him, I'm telling him, God, hold up, I'm in covenant with you. Somebody say, I'm in covenant with God. Come on, let's say, I'm in covenant with God. Would you tell a person, I'm in covenant with God. Pastor, what does that mean? See, a covenant means that we are tied together. And the only way it can be broken is if one of us die. A covenant is a lifetime contract. You don't like when you got married, you said for better or for worse? But then you want to bow out because it got worse? Come on, come on. That's good, Pastor. You the one saying better or for worse? You thought, you thought worse wasn't going to come? <laughs> Where are my married folks? How many folks know that sometimes worse shows up? It shows up. Come on, after, sometimes at the wrong time? Yeah. Come on, I love you, but I don't like you right now. <laughs> Jesus says, to rejoice, here it is, verse 12, and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so, here it is, so persecuted than the prophets which came before you. But drop down to verse 44 in the same chapter. He said, well, I'm telling you, here's the game plan. He says, love your enemies. Hey man, going down some more, Lord. I got to change the churches, Lord. He said, love your enemies. Here it is. Bless them that cuss you. Well, correct. I got less amen than the first one. <laughs> because if you cuss me, I'm going to cuss that. Get in there. 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 He says, do good to them. Here it is. Watch this. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, here's the plan, Tracy. Watch this now. Verse 45. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. He says, if you're going to be identified as being related to me, you got to learn how to love folk when folk don't love you. I learned a long time ago, you can't make folk love you. Baby, I love me enough for both of us. If you ever decide you don't love Larry, Larry love him some me. And when I don't love me, that girl right there love me a lot. Amen. <laughs> so when I'm feeling some kind of way, she said, I love you, baby. I said, bless him. <laughs> Come on, somebody. He says, that ye may be the children of your father. So here's my question then. Then whose game plan are you reading? Whose game book are you reading? Because if every time I'm attacked, I get out the game, you ain't going to ever win. And watch this. What you don't want to do is keep going around the same mountains over and over again. See, God is not like our public school system. I don't care how old you get. God can't pass you to the next level until you pass this test first. And if you're like your pastor, I've already failed enough of them miserably.
miserably. And if God is going to advance my life, I got at some point I gotta pass this test. Woo! Tell my person by say, we gotta pass this test. Oh, let me hit you out. Do I baby? You be either pass it or be here tomorrow. You'll be here next week. You'll be here next year at the same place. Come on, God win. And when you advance me, God say, I'm not. And you keep failing. Come on, come on. Here's the problem wrong when you're injured. I'm almost done. Write this down. Injury often leads to insult and isolation. Injury often leads to insult and isolation. Injury often leads to insults and isolation. This is why it's important to stay connected to your church. Because the enemy wants to get you by yourself. And in an amazing world, when all this stuff broke out, the first thing they said was only go to the places that's essential. Come on. Some of y'all need to be in church. I'm sorry. I need to be in church. Come on, with all the hell I'm going through and dealing with, I need to be in the house of God to hear a word from the Lord. To help me get through the stuff I'm dealing with. And so, the devil takes that injury and he adds insult and then what you do is run and hide and then you're somewhere being all by yourself. Watch this. Notice the pain does not change because you leave. No, no. Come on. If you watch football, they often better either have the guy who's injured on the sideline, mm -hmm. under a blue tent, or take him back to the locker room. All right. But even if they come back to the field, if they are injured, you will see them someplace mm -hmm. on the sideline. On the sideline? Oh, yeah. By themselves. Yeah, right. Mouth poked out. <laughs> Come on, got concussion. Now I can't play. I want concussion protocol. I'm here, but I can't play. Watch this. Get some church folk who are here, but you're in the game. Unsportsmanlike, Pastor, what's that? 
I mean, when I should have been in the game, but I won't even speak to my brother. I won't speak to my sister. Listen, now, truth be told, all of us have done something bad enough to, that the folk don't ever talk to us again. Amen. But do you think I'm going to allow my enemy to tie up my life over an offense? If I forgive them, I free me from the offense. Y'all hear me on I know y'all been a hoop. I, I got to be free in my mind. But if I don't walk in forgiveness, what this, I'm going to run a whole day trying to keep from talking to you, keep from confronting you, but it's still in my mind. And the whole day I'm worried about, as soon as I see you, I'm going to tell you, no, baby, if you were done ingesting, God knows how to handle your enemies. Someone say, God knows how to do it. I'm going to give y'all four things in four minutes. Now I'm done. Break this down. Number one, the assassination attempt came because of your sight. I'm going to say it again. The assassination attempt came because of your assignment. All right. The text says, Jesus says, let us go to the other side. Mm -hmm. Jesus had them on assignment. Yeah. And the devil knew that if they got to the other side, there was a boy who was full of demons. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. And if they got over there, they were going to cast those devils out of the young boy. Oh, yes. And so the devil said, what I got to do is attack them here. here. And if I attack them here in the middle of their assignment, mm -hmm. then they can't do what, what they've been called to do. Mm -hmm. Is the reason the devil attacking you is because of your assignment? Because yeah. this. Ask the question, what have I been called to do? Mm -hmm. All right. Because when you understand what you've been called to do, the reason the enemy is attacking you so hard in that area is because he knows this totally contradicts your assignment. And so he attacks you to yeah. keep us from fulfilling our assignment. Oh, yeah. hey. Watch this. Number two, mm. being overwhelmed doesn't suggest you can't overcome. Come on. Oh, Come on. That's good. That's good. I said being overwhelmed doesn't suggest you can't overcome. Watch this. The Bible said the water was beating in the boat. The problem was Jesus was also in the boat. Now, if the master who made the water, who made the wood that made the boat, if he's in the boat, I don't care whether he's asleep or awake, if he's in the boat, I will get to the place he told me to go. And you're worried about, well, God, how you going to do this? God, how you going to do that? I don't care how God does it. He's the master of everything. And so what the devil wants to do is keep you dazed by the waves. Mm -hmm. So dazed by the waves that you fail to notice you still ain't drowning. Right. <laughs> they were dazed by the waves. Right. Not realizing that even though water is getting in the boat, we're not drowning. Right. Watch this. They were on the boat. The boat was getting full, but the boat didn't go down. No, no. You are Christ. You want the devil has you worried over the potential of what can happen. And I can't be consumed over a potential. I got to learn how to live in the now. And the God of the now can keep me. The Bible says now unto him that is able to keep me from falling. Somebody said, God to keep me, God to keep me. Number three, the inactivity of Jesus doesn't affect his ability. So give me something to solve through. The inactivity of Jesus doesn't affect his ability. What does that mean? He had the same power. Whether he was awake. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's right. Y'all missed that. That's real. You think because God is not moving on your time frame that God is inactive. But in the reality, everything God's going to do is already done. Amen. It's not already. Yes. What God is waiting on us to do, here it is, is to get in position to receive yes. what is already done. All right. Because if I receive what is already done, I wouldn't be crying as much. Come on, wouldn't be worried as much because I receive 
what he's already done for my life. Somebody said, I receive, I receive, I receive. And so, number four, the agitation of the storm must submit to the authority of your mouth. Wow. I'm going to say it again. The agitation of the storm must submit to the authority of your mouth. Y'all missed it. I'm going to say it again. The agitation of the storm must submit to the authority in your mouth. I'm going to say it again. The agitation of the storm must submit to the authority in your mouth. Pastor, please put that one for me on the shelf. I mean, y'all look at me in the U.S. The power is in your mouth. Notice in the text, they said, Lord, you don't care if we perish. Right, right. Now, they had just saw, they had just seen him do miracles with the fish and the loaves. Yes. They just saw the miracles. Yes, he, did. he took two fish and five loaves and fed all of them. Isn't it amazing? We can see God do a miracle. And as soon as trouble hits, we cry to God as though God can't fix our problem. But you don't have any trouble. As Shadrach said, all you need is faith in God. Here, family, is what he was saying. He was saying, what's this? He was saying, in essence, he says, why are you calling me? Power to fix the storm is in your mouth. The power to fix it. Going through is in your mouth. The Bible says the word is not even in my mouth. That's the word of faith that we speak. Preach. So our job, hear me, I'm done, is to be able to open your mouth and declare not what the devil is doing, but begin to declare what God has already done. See, it does not matter what's happening. See, right now in this room, it's a little warm. Maybe just me, I'm talking too much. But I can tell them, say, y'all, cut the heat down. And in 20 minutes, it'll be cold up here. But it happened because I said so. What are you allowing in your life that does not line up with God's game plan for your life? See, what's this? If God wanted it for your life. He would leave it in your life. But he said, I give you power over it. So if he give me power over it, it was suggesting that my job is to exercise my authority over what's coming against me. But if all I do is spend my time saying, I can't believe Mr. Mary would have socked you. Said, get home and set it on fire, baby. Set it on fire. I'm saying what I'm saying. Set it on fire. Y'all, I'm done. Get my point. Don't let the devil keep you so consumed about what you see. Over in 1 Corinthians, says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Pastor, what can I see? You can't see the word of God. But the Bible says in Hebrews that the world will frame by the words of his mouth. What I would do if I were you would find me a blueprint, find a game plan, and fill out, find out how I can rebuild my life. You first attack the weak areas of your life. Because you know the areas you're weak in. See, every weak area. It's not a sinful area. Some weak areas are simply a lack of discipline. Come on. And so you find those areas where you're weak and get strong in those areas. Because God has given us the game plan on how to succeed in life. Amen. You're blessed today. I'm done.
Let's pray. Father of heaven. I thank you for this time of sharing your word. Father, it is my sincere prayer. That the word was not only heard, but it was received. And Father, it is my sincere prayer. That the word that was heard and received. Give us to respond to that word. And to do the word. Not just to hear what's going on. And I pray, God, that as we build ourselves up in the weak areas of our lives and begin to follow the game plan that was set before us, we'll find prosperity, we'll find deliverance, and we'll find wholeness in those areas. I pray, God, for these you see, God, many who are struggling, God, I understand struggle. Many are fighting themselves. I understand self. I understand God, but I pray in the name of Jesus. That you will strengthen them in every weak area. Every man, woman, boy, or girl, strengthen them, God. I curse the hand of the adversary who will come to steal, kill, and destroy. We curse his plans. We curse his assignments and finding useless in our lives. And we call forth you, Father, the glory of Almighty God. We call upon the Spirit of the living God to strengthen us in every weak place. We thank you for it in advance. It's by faith in our rhythm king. We call it done. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Family, come on, give God praise.